Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna give you a detailed walkthrough of the new The Sticker Shop room on TriHackMe. Now, it's probably not super new to you, but I totally missed this room. This came out right before Avenue of Cyber, and at least for me, it was overshadowed by Avenue of Cyber, but this is a really cool room and relatively realistic because it's a client-side attack using cross-site scripting in order to reveal a hidden flag. Now, of course, you're not trying to reveal hidden flags in a real pen test, but cross-site scripting is something that I don't think is talked about enough on platforms. And the reason for that is in order to learn cross-site scripting, you generally need a bot or a user interaction on the back end. But if you want to do bug bounty or get into pen testing, cross-site scripting is something you need to understand and all the different things you can do with cross-site scripting. Generally, when it comes to cross-site scripting, people think, hey, maybe I can use cross-site scripting to read a session cookie and then hijack that session cookie. And that might be possible, although not likely depending on how the cookie security settings are set. But here's the thing with cross-site scripting, you are able to execute JavaScript in the context of the victim's browser. Now, let me explain my terms a little bit. JavaScript is client side code. So you're not getting like a reverse shell by any means. Client side means not server side. It means you're affecting the person, not the backend server. But if you're able to attack, for example, an administrator with JavaScript, you can do really anything the administrator is able to do if you're able to get the correct payload. One of the CVEs I found, actually I found a few CVEs with cross-site scripting, but one of them allowed me to use cross-site scripting to elevate my privileges to an administrator and then to abuse a file read process. So really I use cross-site scripting to go from a low level user to full file read on the backend server as root. So there's some cool ways you can chain cross-site scripting together. And this room shows one of those ways and how we can use cross-site scripting to read remote files. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and share my screen and we will dive into this room together. Now I already jumped on the VPN. I have the target IP right here, but let me go ahead and grab this IP and we'll add it to our Etsy host just so we don't need to remember the IP. So let's jump over to my terminal and we'll do sudo nano Etsy host. Type in our password and we'll jump down to our bottom here and we'll call it sticker shop dash THM. See if I can ping it and I can. Beautiful. So let's read what we are doing. It says your local sticker shop has finally developed its own web page. They do not have too much experience regarding web development, so they decided to develop and host everything on the same computer that they use for browsing the internet and looking at customer feedback. Smart move. You would be surprised though how often this actually happens in small businesses. Can you read the flag here? Well, let's go ahead and try to read the flag first. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm also gonna open up Kaido. Kaido is what I use when I'm doing CTFs because it's more affordable than Burp Suite Pro, but provides more features than Burp Suite Community Edition. We will create a project and we will call this Sticker Shop. <clears throat> like so, I'll go over to Intercept here, open up the built-in browser, and we will go to HTTP Sticker Shop THM. And you can see connection refused. So we don't have anything right there. If we look over to this, over to the try hack me room, it looks like it's on flag or on port 8080. So let's go ahead and try that and just see, hey, maybe we can read the flag. And we get 401 unauthorized. So first, let's go ahead and just see what other ports might be open on this machine. We can do that with Rust scan. You could also use InMap. I like to use Rust scan because it's easy to remember the syntax to find all the ports and then pass them over to InMap. So here's how I like to open up my scans. We'll do Rust scan dash A sticker shop dash THM. And now what this is going to do is going to scan every port with Rust scan, see which ports are open. And then we're going to say, Hey, any open ports, I want you to pass over to InMap and run the dash capital A flag with InMap. Now, if you know your InMap flags, that just means, Hey, I want you to throw like all the enumeration scripts at this and let's see what is running on these ports. We'll go ahead and run that. And while I do that, let me look over at chat, making sure I'm not missing anything. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Something about NVIDIA launching a 5070 laptop. Cool. We'll check that out. That sounds like a solid one. Hi, Tyler. I can't access HackSmarter. Keep giving me 403 error. So I have a web application firewall in front of HackSmarter because someone tried to DDoS the website. And it could just be your IP is from one of the countries or IP locations that AWS bans with their WAF. Um, I will send you a direct invite link to join the Discord though real quick. 
while we run these scans. So we'll go to hacksmarter.org. Let me go ahead and cat discord.txt. And you should be able to join the community with this URL. All right, let's jump back to this. You can see exactly what I was saying. So first it ran Rust scan and it found port 22 open. That's of course gonna be SSH. And we have port 80 open right here. And then it's going to run in map against it with dash A to see what might be running on these ports. But we honestly, don't really need to wait for the scan to finish. We know this is going to be a web app based challenge based on the room description and port 22. We don't have cred. So if we find cred, maybe we can use that, but we can see just looking once again at the description of the room, it says, Hey, can you read the flag here? So we don't need to get remote code execution or anything like that. We just need to read the flag and see what information we are able to get. So let's see what this website looks like. If we jump back over to here, we have this, welcome to the cat sticker shop. We only sell stickers at our physical store. Please feel free to stop by. So we'll jump over to this. We have home, that's what we're on right now. There's a few other things that we can do and I always like to set my notes up. So let's jump over to my notes. And first we're gonna do an H1 for enumeration. And then underneath enumeration, let's do an, in, an H2 for in-map scan. And the cool thing about uh, Notion, which is what I'm using, it creates a table of contents for us. We're going to drop the in-map scan information in there. Anytime there's a web server running, there's two main scans I like to run. I want to do a, a brute force search for any directories that might be open, as well as fuzzing for vhosts. Although that's not really needed on this machine, I like to do it on every single machine to develop the muscle memory, and hey, you never know what you might find. So let's go ahead and do an H2, and we'll call this dir search, and we'll drop in that for our results, and we'll do another H2, and we'll call it vhost to look for virtual host, and we'll drop that in as well for our results. If we look over to in-map scan, you can see that our scan is done. We don't need a lot of this stuff. I think we'll just back up to maybe right here. We'll go ahead and copy that, jump over to our in-map scan, go like so, and we have the two ports that are open. Over here on dirt search, what this is gonna do, is gonna be a directory brute forcer. So it's gonna try a bunch of different directories at the end of the web server to see if there's like a, a slash secret or a slash admin that maybe isn't exposed on the main web server. So let's go ahead and get that scan running. We'll do dirt search slash u, HTTP, sticker shop dash THM, port 8080, and we'll kick that off and let it run. Change it to dirt search. We'll also scan for vhost just for good enumeration. And I just made a wrapper for Fafuff for this. You can get it out of my GitHub at Tenebrae93, but really it just uses Fafuff on the back end. I just always forget the syntax for scanning for virtual hosts. So I made a custom little tool for that. Whoops, if I could type in the right tool one. You can see it just takes a domain, a word list, URL, and FS filter. So let's go ahead and run this against this domain. We'll do sticker shop dash THM for the domain. Our word list, we can use durbuster directory list 2.3 medium dot text. Our URL is going to be sticker shop dash THM on port 8080. Our FS filter, we can begin with one and then we can change it. FS filter means filter by size. We know if the vhost doesn't exist, it's size 1655. So let's go ahead and change this now to 16, whoops. I don't have numlock on, cool. There we go, 1655, and then we should be good to go. Looking over at chat, make sure I'm not missing anything. Peace out, Sir Hexalot, good to have you here. Hey, random question, who is your favorite box creator? Probably XCT, now that I've been doing his stuff on VolnLab. Or my friend Amoeba Man, one of those two. Bottleneck said the command you do opens a bash box, I tried doing it and it does not work for me. I can do something similar. Yeah, it should, although I'm using three of those dots. So if we jump back over to Notion, I'm actually going like this, one, two, three. So not two of them, you have to use three of them, but when you do that, it should open up a bash box. So one, two, three, and on the third one, it opens up the box for us. All right, we have vhost running, we have our dirt search running, which isn't finding anything too interesting. Let's go ahead and check out this website. We have a feedback right here and it says, please submit your feedback regarding our product. And I'll say, hey, you should sub to Tyler on YouTube. He's a cool guy. That's of course great feedback. And let's just see what that looks like. So if we intercept that request with Kaido and hit submit, we can send that over to replay, hit send, and let's see what it does. It says, thanks for your feed, get back. It will be evaluated shortly by our staff. Now, one thing to keep in mind, anytime you're doing a CTF or a boot to root machine, when you see words 
such as something will be evaluated or something will be monitored, that should trigger in your mind that cross-site scripting might be a possibility. That is always the creator's way of telling you, hey, there is some interaction on the back end. There's a, maybe a headless browser, there's some bot that's simulating a real user. So whenever you see input being submitted and then that input saying it is being monitored or evaluated, always think, how can I use cross-site scripting? How can I use JavaScript in order to try to attack the user? Now, if we go back over to our challenge description right here, it says, can you read the flag? Now, there's this cool guy named Tyler who made a video all about this attack. There's actually another Try Hack Me room called Why Hack Me, and I maybe can pull that up real quick. If we go over to Try Hack Me, learn, actually, let me go search, and I'm going to search for Why Hack Me. This room was similar, although there's a lot of other moving pieces. I don't want to show all the flags, but it's a medium room. Dive into the depths of security analysis with why hack me. Now, what I did when I created this room is I learned, hey, with cross-site scripting, I can actually read remote files I don't have access to. And I made a whole YouTube video about this. So if you go over to youtube.com, I don't know what just happened. There we go. <clears throat> we'll see if I can even find my own video. Let's, let's see if I can find it. Tyler Ramsby, read remote files with cross-site scripting. There we go. Reading a secret. Oh, that's local file inclusion. I assure you guys, I have a video somewhere. <laughs> when I find it, I'll drop the link to it in um, the description of this video. We'll see if I can do a quick search on my own page for cross-site scripting. There we go. Using cross-site scripting in Python to steal sensitive data. So in this video, which I kind of feel like Inception right now, because I'm making a video of my video, of me watching my video. I'm not actually going to watch it. But here's the lesson I want you to take away. I went through a machine on Try Hack Me called Why Hack Me. And on that machine, I encountered a form of cross-site scripting I had never exploited before. And because it was new to me, I ended up making a script about it and releasing a video about it to cement my own learning. One of the best ways to learn material is to teach the material. And that's why I make YouTube videos. By me teaching and being forced to explain what I'm doing, it helps me learn the material better. But another takeaway here is when you discover a new attack, make a script for it. Even though I'm sure there's countless scripts out there that do it better than my script does, me forcing myself to make a script to perform this attack really helped me cement the material. So as soon as I saw this room that I had to read a flag.txt, I kid you not, I solved this room initially from booting it up to getting the flag in probably about five minutes because I already made a script to solve this and my script works in this room as well. So those are the takeaways here. We have a link right here to my Python script. I will drop it in the live stream for anyone who wants to follow along. <clears throat> yep, you're right. Dirt search is not on, uh, dirt search and Kaido are not available on the Try Hack Me machine, but you can install it. To install a uh, dirt search, it is pip3 install dirt search. That's all you have to do to install dirt search. As far as Kaido, you can use Burp Suite Community Edition. It's going to do the same stuff for you. But you can see right here is my XX extract.py. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on how this script works because I created an entire video where I walk through and explain the script. But long story short, what it's going to do is it's going to cause our victim user to click flag.txt. We don't have access to it, but the admin has access to it. And when they open flag.txt, it's going to send us the data all through the magic and the power of JavaScript. So if you think about this in the real world, imagine for a moment you find cross-site scripting and you're targeting an admin user. Let's say the admin user has access to customer data or sensitive data on an endpoint that is 403 or inaccessible to you. Well, if you can target the admin with cross-site scripting, you can actually steal that sensitive data and send it back to yourself all through the power of cross-site scripting. Now, if you wanna do this, you can just go raw, grab this script right here. I'm gonna go over to my terminal, make a directory for a sticker shop, CD over to sticker shop, and we'll do nano xxxextract.py, drop it in right there. And if we run it, you can see what we need to do. It says, hey, you need to pass it, oh, we can do dash H. 
uh, should show us. So this script will generate a malicious JS file. When this is used in a cross-site scripting attack, it will cause the victim to navigate to the target directory and send the content to the attacker, which is what we want to do. We want to see flag.txt that we don't have access to. Remember, that is the challenge of this room. Let me go to the right room right here, flag.txt. <clears throat> the XX payload is this, so I even give you the payload that you need to put into the machine. But let's go ahead and give this a shot. So it says, first we need to say dash D in our directory. Well, we want to read flag.txt, and then we need to dash I for our IP. Mine is right up there. We'll do 10.13.46.224, like so, and we will hit enter. And it says, JavaScript code has been written to script.js. If we cat out script.js, you can see exactly what it is doing, which I explained in that previous video. But let's go ahead and give this a shot. We do need to open up a Python web server because we need our victim to reach out to our web server. So we'll just open a basic Python web server on port 80, and we can even grab the exact syntax that we need from right up there. So I'm gonna grab that script, jump over to here, and we can go ahead and turn off intercept. And let's submit some more feedback, but instead let's send it our cross-site scripting payload like so. We'll do 10.13. 46.224, and once again, this is executing JavaScript client-side code. If the admin views this, Without them doing anything, just by viewing our message, JavaScript is going to execute. It's going to send them to flag.txt and it's going to send us the information without them really even knowing what happened. Let's go ahead and hit submit and it went through. Let me look at chat, make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, Deadpool, I'll answer that uh, once I'm done making this video. Just remind me. Tony B, would Bash work for this or is Python the way to go? I suppose you could do it with Bash. Um, I just prefer Python for little tools like this. But look at that. You can see our admin clicked it because you can see that is not my IP. That is the IP of the machine. They clicked it and they went to flag.txt. Although we can't see flag.txt, they sent us the content of flag.txt right there. You can see it is URL encoded, but we can uh, decode that pretty easily ourselves. That's just going to be like so and like so. And we'll hit submit. And there we go. Congratulations on completing the sticker shop. We completed it. We earned 30 points. We got our streak to number one. But that is the sticker shop room. So once again, if I wouldn't have done the work with Why Hack Me and wrote an entire Python script for the possibility of discovering the stack in the future, it would have taken me a lot more time to figure out the payload that I need to steal flag.txt. But it's just a reminder, as you work through rooms on Try Hack Me or Hack the Box or Volnab, whatever your platform is, as you work through rooms, make sure you take good notes. As you discover new attack paths, make sure you make tools for those attack paths. If you look at my notes right here, at least on on-prem, you can see all these machines that I've done, and this is only after I switch over to Notion. If I could show you my OneNote and then my Cherry Tree, I mean, I have a massive list of rooms. I also have cloud rooms, but every room that I do, even when I'm not streaming, I take detailed notes on it. And I'm always looking for ways, how can I develop a tool? How can I make a script to accomplish this better for me when I encounter it in the future? But that right there, my friends, is my detailed guide to the sticker shop on Try Hack Me. Kudos to Try Hack Me and the room creator. It was an easy room, but it was a fun room and you learn a real world attack in the process. So, hey, y'all, thank you for watching. If there's a question you have, something you're confused about, if I forgot to drop a link in the description of this video, let me know in the comments. Believe it or not, I do my best to read every single comment on my YouTube video. So if you do have a question or a comment, I will see it and I will do my best to help you out over in the comment section. So thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.